Vincent Van Gogh painted a wheat field of cypresses while he was staying at the St. Paul de Mazol Mental Health Asylum, which he voluntarily admitted himself to. While in the asylum, Van Gogh wrote to his brother Theo in which he described his series of artworks. I have a canvas of cypresses with a few ears of wheat, poppies, a blue sky, which is like a multicolored scotch plaid. Van Gogh created the composition three times. He first created a re-pen drawing of the artwork, which can now be seen at the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. The re-pen drawing allowed Van Gogh to copy the work twice using oils. The paintings were done in 1889 and were painted with oil on canvas. The first painting was done in June or July of 1889, right after Van Gogh had completed Starry Night. The painting measures 28 and a half inches by 36 inches and is displayed at the National Gallery in London. Van Gogh sketched out the design using charcoal underdrawings. He then applied thick paint to the cypress trees and to the sky. Charcoal underdrawing is a technique in which the artist does a sketch of the subject using charcoal while usually looking at the scene. He is then able to take the charcoal sketch back indoors to paint under the right conditions. The scene of the painting overlooks a golden wheat field with red poppies in the foreground. And if you look to the very right of the painting, there is a tall, deep green cypress tree. There are small light green olive trees to the left of the cypress, and in the distance there are blue-gray mountains with swirly white clouds sitting in the sky. The mountains in the background are displayed using aerial perspective. The horizon of the painting, which is found in the lower third of the painting, guides the viewer's eyes to the main focal point, the cypress trees. When describing this artwork, the Bridgman Art Library states, Cypresses, swirling clouds, fields of wheat and poppies. It must be Van Gogh. The swirling of the clouds allow the viewer to easily gaze upon the small shrubs in the left corner and the back of the dark, contrasted cypress trees. Van Gogh's painting gives the viewer the sense that they are standing in an actual wheat field. When analyzing this painting, Bernie Rossett states, I get the sense I am there, standing in the field, feeling the wind blown on my face. Van Gogh's use of linear strokes that follow contour shapes like clouds, grass, hillsides, and his use of expressive color makes his work unique. God save thee, ancient mariner, from the fiends that plague thee thus. Why lookest thou so? With my crossbow, I shot the albatross. In 1798, Samuel Taylor Coleridge published The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, from which these lines are taken. This was an epic poem that saw great admiration. So great that a romantic French artist by the name of Gustave Doré created a series of 38 wood engravings for the late 1800s self-republication, which, although not commercially successful, were to be his last real monument, as stated by Nigel Gosling. Doré was involved in a great deal of art forms, including painting and sculpturing, but it is his illustrations and engravings that are most known. Such engravings would come to provide inspiration for budding artists such as Vincent van Gogh. Being a part of the Romanticism movement, Doré influenced largely by Delacroix, was heavily focused on the imagination and emotions which allowed him to convey themes that included horror, adventure, and a sense of awe. Such styles and interests were ideal for the more subtle haunting scenes of foreboding that typically involved supernatural elements from known stories, such as his famous works of the Imperion from the Divine Comedy, the Wrestle Jacob taken from the English Bible, and various Greek scenes such as Andromeda. This particular one, known as I Shot the Albatross, created in 1884, is an engraving detailing the moment when the mariner shoots an albatross that has thus brought the ship crew good fortune. As the story progresses, the mariner encounters both death and life and death, whom curse him for killing the bird. As he suffers, the mariner comes to appreciate all life that God has created. When looking at this illustration, Doré's unique style is shown. The background in particular, appearing to be a great many tombstones, shows the use of a sense of horror combined with foreboding. Although no death has yet occurred, the approaching arrow to the albatross leads to the death of the 200 men that make up the crew. The approaching death of the bird, one can assume, is not going to be a peaceful one. This appeals to the emotions, as the bird's death is relating to the death of good. This becomes especially evident when looking at Doré's The Ice Was All Around, also about the ancient mariner, where the albatross takes on a Christ-like perspective, complete with the rainbow halo. Instead of covering the scene with fog that would drown out the scene, the use of a fog-ridden atmosphere, similar to aerial perspective, is used. 
This work is the most crucial work in relation to the story, as it shows the moment of doom for the albatross and thus the crew. In response to this, the age-old theme of good versus evil comes out without the lines being clear-cut. Although Doré shows the bird as Christ-like in one image, when the bird is leading the ship out of ice, it is never actually declared in the tale if the bird is good or bad. It appeared, and the crew escaped the ice. On the other hand, it followed and the crippling fog appeared. The mariner is trying to help the crew escape the dense fog, so he does the only thing he could think of. Is he good for doing so, or evil for killing the bird? Is he punished for being evil, or punished by evil? Dore takes these uncertainties and portrays them with the air of the bird and the tombstones in equality, while being both true to the story and his own interpretations. The loss of background common in his art is seen here, leading to the sense of unknowing. The albatross, although not realistic, is not shown in a particularly ghostly way as the rest of the images. Even the approaching arrow coming into the image from the dead-looking shitmast seems to bear more evil to it, helping to convey the overall theme of the tale. This story illustration, much like his other works, is not purely original. However, his ability to take written words and portray them in such a visual way is what allows his art to have an impact on history, art, and literature.